Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that if you're returning. How you doing? What we're going to talk about right now is <clears throat> trash, garbage. Yeah, um, I think this is something that not a lot of us think about uh, when it comes to being of the prepared mind. When, say, a societal collapse hits or even just a disaster, okay, hurricane, tornado, uh, earthquake, you know, we don't really think about where we're going to put our trash, right? A lot of us have our food, our water, and a game plan. We can eat, drink, and be merry all we want. But what about when there's no trash pickup? Globally, did you know that we produce 2.12 billion tons of waste every single year? That's a lot. And if that garbage was put into trucks, it would circle the globe 24 times. Imagine that, okay? It's a lot of trash. And of course, as food and supplies start to dwindle, of course, the amount of garbage is going to diminish as well. But we should still know how to prepare for that threat of garbage. And that's exactly what it is. It is a threat. Now... With this threat, I want you to just think for just a moment. Flies, maggots, fleas, gnats, cockroaches, ants, and the smell. Dear God, Lord, help me, the awful smell. Can you imagine? And also rats, rats that bite. What caused the black pug? Anybody? Anybody? rats and fleas. Okay. So garbage is probably one of the biggest threats that we will face during a long-term disaster or a collapse. This is especially true in areas around the world that don't have like regular trash pickup. Like, okay, like every Monday you put your trash can out there because you know, Tuesday morning, the trash guys are coming, right? A lot of areas of the world, they don't have that. All right. So it can happen here. And I don't want you to think, oh, it's fine. Nah, no, it's not fine. Okay. It can happen here as well. And have you ever been to a big city when city workers go on strike or there's a severe storm that makes trash collection impossible? Okay. There's also this issue of municipal solid waste landfills and water treatment plants not being available or functioning garbage for days and weeks. So think about that. Okay. This means that toxic materials that were once buried at a landfill or disposed of properly, it's not going to be taken care of anymore. One toxic chemical that is produced by trash, by our everyday trash that we just throw away and the garbage guys come and take it and they take it to a landfill. Methane emissions. Yeah. Even landfills, okay, they are have been known to contaminate our water. So garbage in general litter, they contaminate our land besides the ocean that we rely on heavily for food anyway. This means that the soil will not have proper nutri nutrients that it needs to grow food for our freedom gardens. It also means that food that is grown in that soil can and will be contaminated with toxins harmful to our bodies, such as carcinogens. The issue of garbage is very real, and I want you to take a serious thought into this, okay? Because when it hits, it will hit Americans so hard during a long-term long disaster, we're going to be like, what? what is that smell? Why am I being bit? I mean, that's exactly what's going to happen, okay? So how do we prepare? How do we prepare for a garbage buildup? Well, the first thing is you can burn it. You can burn your garbage if it's allowed in the areas in which we reside. Do you have a burn pit or a fire pit? Things like that, okay? It's not the healthiest solution, but it's been done for thousands of years. 
But like I said, all depending on where you live, unless there is a total societal collapse and we've got zombies running around, then who cares, right? But you're still going to have code enforcement on your butt. You're still going to get ticketed because you're burning trash when you're not supposed to be burning trash because there's a house next to you and there's a house on that side. There's a house behind you and people are complaining. Okay. If you can't burn certain things, it might be a good idea to bury it, especially household waste. There are local laws and regulations, and they should also be a part of your decision making here. Okay, because like I said, if you live in an HOA, you're not going to be able to burn nothing or even bury anything. So you really have to take things into consideration. Plus, you don't know where they buried wires at. When they build houses, they bury wires. So you have to be careful on where you dig if you were to bury your garbage. You have to be careful because if you hit a line, you're in trouble, okay? And you are, are, at, uh, are responsible for paying to have that line fixed. If there's not a societal collapse and, you know, we've got jackasses running around. But burying your garbage helps prevent the spread of diseases. It keeps rodents at bay. Animals like coyotes and stuff like that, raccoons, it keeps them at bay. However, never bury your trash next to a water source. Do you know where your water source is on your property? A lot of us don't. All right. Never dig a hole below the water table level because then you're just going to disrupt a whole bunch of stuff that you don't want to disrupt. Burying garbage in urban areas is more than likely a temporary solution, just like burning your trash. It's a temporary solution. Now, human waste. Let's talk about, you know, number one, number two, when you go caca and you don't have anywhere to put it. Okay, this is another issue that we have to think about, especially if we've got little nuggets running around. Okay, this is where you have to be extremely careful because the only thing that we can do is be safe and bury our waste at least 200 feet away. Now, ask yourself this question. Are you going to be doing caca in a, in a five-gallon bucket and then willing to walk that caca button, that bu bucket 200 feet away from where you are and away from any water resource, dig a hole that's six to eight inches deep and put it in there. It's just a question. These are the things that I don't think a lot of people think about. Okay. Plus, if you've got a house like I do where you've got eight people, okay, you've got four adults, one teenager, and three kids under the age of 13 in your house. And somebody is always going potty. So now you got to remember, you got to walk away 200 feet away from any water source, dig a hole and put it in there. Okay. These are the things that I think about because I've got an eight year old, two nine year olds, a 14 year old and four adults. Okay. This is one approach that is for sure to be temporary about digging a hole 68 inches, walking away 200 feet, but it's possibly necessary depending on your local sewer situation. Now, I know you can say, well, I'll just use the toilet and then I'll dump a bucket of water down the toilet. You can, but you also got to be careful because if you've got a septic tank like I do, that fills up. And if you can't get that pumped every year, two years, three years, all depending on how many people you got in your house, you're going to have a royal mess on your hands because that stuff starts to rise up out of the ground and holy smokes when I tell you, okay? I mean, 
you know, it's not fun smelling the caca of eight people. Okay, I'm just saying. So I want you to start getting creative with your garbage now. Okay, there will be no recycling bins when shit hits the fan. So you will have to find creative uses for these things that you can't burn or bury. If you have a garden, that's awesome because now you could start a compost pile. Look into places where you can bury your garbage. Uh, try to get a fire pit or a burn pit. Okay. Just think about these things. All right. Uh, because I think that this is something that we really should be thinking about right now. Okay. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next one. You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping. And as always, fearless. Ciao.